Brad, I went viral again. Again? Yeah, it's it's more stupid Will Smith shit. Oh, imagine that. What happened? Um, punished Kate on Twitter posted, "What's the funniest thing ever? You, and someone's ever gotten mad at you for on here? I think mine is when somebody told me I was rich and privileged for saying back service condo quarters at malls are scary at night while I was in the service quarter because I worked there. I said slapping Chris Rock. Yes, and then I went to bed and like fifteen people had liked it and it was like friends and I, I was like, aha, here's a funny joke for people I follow and now three hundred thousand people have liked it. What? Yeah. Okay, I." Saw it. I saw that very early, like when you were probably in the double digits, like you said. I, I, I too figured that would be that. Man, once again, Brad, you're a thought leader. You know the hits play over and over. It turns out. Yep. Yep. It's just like the the nice thing about this time versus the last time though is that now there's a third category of people who are pissed off at me because like the traditional two are people who are mad that I hit Chris Rock mm-hmm. or people who are mad, uh, mad that I didn't. To be fair, you shouldn't have hit Chris Rock. I mean, I think I think we can all agree that you should not have done that. Yeah, look, I mean, I think you and I both are completely aligned on the idea that words are rare. Uh, violence, with a few notable exceptions, rarely is the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the two groups of people before people who were like, rah, rah, good job uh, defending your wife and oh, hell no, don't ever hit people. Uh, and then now there's the the third category of people who are pissed that I bought a blue check mark. Uh, on Twitter for the joke. Um, and then there's the fourth and fifth categories, which are people who are like, no, he's not that Will Smith. And then also like, no, he didn't buy the blue check mark. And it's just a, it's cats and dogs living. It's it look, mistakes were made. Have, have, have they not figured out that you can just click through and see if somebody bought the check mark or not? No, the kind of people who are yelling at people on random strangers on the internet about things they're upset about don't generally click through to profiles I've found over the years. That stands to reason. Yeah. Do you find, I don't know if this is just confirmation bias, but do you find your Twitter experience is degrading pretty quickly? Like, yes. Like I'm, I'm finding like weird stuff, like seeing a tweet with like 50 replies on it and I click through to it and it won't render more than like two. And it's, it's not even a show more tweets or show more replies or like, there's just nothing there. Um, the thing I'm getting is that I'll get batches of notif like the notifications come in in real batchy ways now instead of, like, it used to be that like when you had something that people were liking, it would kind of constantly tick up and you'd be able to see it. And now it's just, just nonstop, like big batches of hundred, 200 likes, whatever coming in at a time. Yeah. Um, the, the quality thing I've noticed, so I've been spending time on Mastodon lately. And the thing that I've noticed is the quality of conversation in terms of signal to noise, just with weird bot stuff and people who are spammy there versus Twitter is, it's an enormous difference. Mm. It feels very much like old school Twitter, but it's not all white people from tech that I followed on Twitter in 2009. You mean, you mean to tell me a platform that does not have a significant fraction of the world's population using it? is a cleaner experience. So our backyard would be a, a mud hole. Oh, man. Outdoor turkey. Yeah. Remember the year we did the outdoor Thanksgiving? Oh, we were right. here for that. Yes. Yes. We, that, yes. we had like three tables of people and mm. a giant backyard uh, soiree. Yeah. Not and, to make everything about Twitter, but the image of me and my Twitter banner is from that backyard table. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, nice. That, that, was, a great, you, that was a did, great time. Did you, is that, did you go ham on a leg that year? I can't remember. Mm. Generally, when a leg is offered... Uh, ham is undertaken. Brad, I don't, I think the banner, your Twitter banner image is, uh, has changed since you last remembered. Wait, what are you talking about? Wait, well, are they messing with people's banners now? 
No, I don't think so. This one looks like one you chose, but it's uh, it's not. It's definitely not you at, in my backyard. As oh, far the, as the, I don't the know. head, the head, oh, the, the head, head absolutely, absolutely is. Oh, okay, very good. You see, very you good. see, you see the photoshopping. Yes, I, I, I thought this was a real life capture of you no. and a demon from some sort of hellish I, stew. That's, that's not just a demon. That's not just any demon. That's what life is, stealer. What's I don't know what life stealer is. You, oh, you should. Let me introduce you to Dota Two. Oh no, I'm good. Thank okay. you. <laughs> You should be, you should I, be thankful. I say no to drugs, Brad. You should be thankful that you don't play Dota 2. Look, I've had to have the conversation with my daughter lately where I'm like, hey, you know how when you play Fortnite and at the end of the, whether you win or lose, you've like had a fun time and you feel happy and you know mm-hmm. how you play Roblox and when you finish a game, you're just kind of sad. Yes. Those are that, those are the examples of good feeling games and bad feeling games. Mm-hmm. And you should, you should, you'll feel better and have a happier time if you just play games that make you feel good at the end instead of the ones that make you feel angry whether you win or lose. You know, that's good advice for life. Maybe do things that make you happy and don't do things that don't. Yeah, so, uh, you know, hence more Mastodon time, less Twitter time. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, this week, because uh, we are in a ret- uh, retrospective thankful season, we're going to come back and do something we haven't done. We used to do this at Tested a lot every year, I think. And uh, uh, we haven't done it. We did it here once and we haven't done it since. But I, I, I think we both like it. And I think it's a I think we're going to uh, we, we, we just want to talk about things we're thankful for. The things for which Tech. we are thankful tech what we are thankful for tech edition yes yes um, um and like some of this is some of this is going to be uh familiar to longtime listeners if you're new you might have some new things here that you've not heard that we that we that we do love and don't talk about as much as we used to anymore uh but yeah you want to kick off brad or you want me to go first um i could start talking about this apple watch briefly Ooh. Which I'd actually, this is all theoretical for the most part, because I have not really lived my normal life with this watch yet, despite having had it for over, well over a month now. Okay. So I got, I got, oh, I got yeah. the Apple Watch like days, like three days before I flew back to the East Coast. Oh, for, for a week I, didn't and a half. You got a, I didn't realize you got an East Coast Apple Watch. Yes, indeed. Uh, and I, I enjoyed it there quite a bit. And then I flew back out here and then proceeded to immediately get sick for a month. So yeah, that, that, that'll that happen. So I haven't really gotten to use it in my kind of day to day routine in the way that I'm most excited about using it, which is for the health stuff. Mm. Like that's kind of not the thing. Well, there, there's some other stuff there, too. But like I was going on a little walks and stuff when I was back home with this thing. And I was kind of shocked how motivating all the ring stuff is. The, the ring stuff is it's kind of icky how excited it makes yeah. me about getting up off my ass. So for me. I mean, I guess excited is is a, a word I could use there. But the the thing I wanted to say, though, is it's not that it gamifies exercise and health for me. I'm not like chasing high scores. It's <laughs> the rings are almost more of like a scold. Like when but it's I see gentle. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the watch is not rude. It's very <laughs> it's very positive reinforcement. Like you can still do it if you get up and move around. You can still close this ring. If you but, go on a brisk 37 minute walk, you yeah. can close your exercise ring today. Um, Maybe scolding is is a harsh term, but like there is a bit of soft admonishment from it. When it's it, like whenever. a nudge. Kind of. Yeah, it's 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 less like, oh, I need to rack up a new high score today. It's more man, I really haven't gotten up and done much today. Have I? I should go for a walk. Like it's just it's more of a reminder than anything. It's really just a, a way to gauge the fact that you have not gotten enough activity. And especially when you work from home, that's critical. I, I wish that it did. Um, so I got mine. Well, actually, after I was in the hospital last year, because like not being having the watch to unlock your phone without having when. Well, at the time, the phones wouldn't unlock with masks on the face phones. Um, so having to type in my passcode 300 times a day when I was in the hospital was a pain in the ass. Wait, on the phone or the watch? On the phone. OK. So um, now the face the face ID unlocks the phone with masks on pretty reliably. OK. But Re- um, the reason I asked was there's no. um. There's no synchronization between unlocking phone and watch, right? You, you know, you can turn that on. It's an option. It's in watch oh. options on your oh, phone, okay. I think. My, my watch is still set that I have to I have to type in the passcode every time I put it on. Yeah, no. If you have the if you set it, if you flip the switch, it'll it'll when you unlock the watch while the phone is unlocked and nearby, it'll unlock. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and you get a little notification on the watch or vice versa. Uh, it goes either way. Actually, having to go find my phone to unlock the watch sounds worse now that I think about it. Well, you can still I'll, use the passcode on the phone. Yeah, on the watch. I'll, I'll, yeah. I might just stick with the passcode. Um, anyway, the the point is, but you shouldn't have to do the the, the passcode should stay locked uh, unlocked while you, the phone's on your ri- the watch is on your wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, talking okay. about. But I, I I've found that I take it off three or four times a day. Oh, okay. Um, 
but, but yeah, the, the, the convenience of having the notifications there. So I didn't have to have the phone out all the mm-hmm. time is really nice. Like, yes. like I understand why it's popular amongst teachers and nurses and food professionals and things like that. So they can remain a little bit connected even when they're not able to, you know, handle their fav- most favorite device. Yes. Or, or even for me, I just am bad about, about keeping up with my phone around the house. Like I absentmindedly leave it on silent a lot and I'm not often in the same room as it. You know about the and ding, ding, ding button, right? The ding, ding, ding. Button? The thing on your watch. Okay. So if you swipe up to the control center, the top left, the the button of the phone with the little sound waves next to it. If you hit that, it makes your phone make a loud oh, noise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've that's, also, yeah. that's, that's like the, that's the real secret yes, winner feature I, on the watch. I, I had to use that the other day, like three days ago. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm missing a lot fewer notifications than I was. Um, it kind of, it's just sort of made me a believer in wearable tech. Maybe not, not like, you know, I'm not saying we should bring Google Glass back or something like that, but having you know, having a device that's hooked into this ecosystem on your wrist at all times, like all the lights around here are automated. Mm-hmm. And as nice as that is for actually scheduling lights on and off, it kind of makes manually turning them on and off worse. Yeah. Because you have to go find a phone or a tablet every time you want to turn the damn lights you, on. And that's or you can so- just ask Alexa or Google Home or something oh, like that. Maybe you can if you're comfortable with robots monitoring your every word. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. let, let them know I'm on their side so that they know I'm a patsy when the when the end times come fair um, but yeah like having the thing on my wrist all the time it's like holy shit I can just turn all these lights on and off do you have it hooked up with home with Apple home uh, yes okay yeah all that stuff well a home assistant actually runs everything under the hood but it's all yeah. exposed in home so I can turn everything on and off with the watch and I've got like that's like mood lighting in the living room that I like to turn on and off in the Ooh. evening like we've got a sound machine in the bedroom that's on that and like just being able to do that at all times with the thing on my wrist um it's, it's super nice the the open source music server that i run uh exposes itself over the network as just an airplay as as an itunes like home share and airplay setup so like any apple device can hook into that do you know that you know the remote app yeah ios remote for like yeah, controlling of course remote. i use it iTunes. every day it's iTunes, constant uh, itunes library um yeah, so that that lives on the phone so I can like just play music in any room of the house from my wrist now. Like it's kind of amazing. The the neat thing the uh, on that front, the fact that you can use it as a remote for Apple TVs is really cool. Yeah. Um the only thing I can't do is I can't figure out how to do the long press on the menu to make it hang up, uh, to mm-hmm. make it turn off the you know, open the big menu so you can put the put the the Air T- Air, Apple TV to sleep. But yeah. um but yeah, like like it's funny cuz rolling the the crown adjust the volume when you're watching tv uh, and and the neat thing is if you're like if i'm in the living room watching tv it just puts the remote up without because it knows that i'm near that tv yeah so so it's it's kind of it's smart in a way that is is actually smart instead of annoying yes. anyway yes who, who, I'm who would have thought who would have thought having having a thing on your wrist all the time that replicates most of the functionality of your phone well it's it's pretty and, handy and it's also worth it's it's worth mentioning that like when it first came out 10 years ago, almost now it was kind of crap. Yes. Like, like it wasn't, it was just notifications and sometimes Siri, if you were lucky and it would take your heartbeat. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm very glad I waited as long as I did. Cause it, it finally has matured to a place where it feels oh, very, no. very worth having positive reinforcement for bad behavior. Brad, Dude, how was it? You, <laughs> you just said it was crap. Look, sometimes, sometimes you got to pave the way for the people who come after you. That's, hey man, I'm happy to let you, yeah. Um, so I, one of the projects that's happened this year is when we switched to MagSafe phones last year, I, I bought like $15 Anker MagSafe chargers for our nightstands. Um, and as a result, we had a couple of charge pads around that I, that I've put in places that like, that, you know, Gene and I often find ourselves. So like by the couch and in the kitchen and there's one on my desk too. And having wireless charging ubiquitous is so nice because like if my AirPods need charging, I just drop the case on there. If the phone needs like if I'm in the if I'm in the kitchen working on food and I have paprika open, which keeps the screen on all the time, then I just put it on the pad and I don't worry about it. And and I can it's set up on the edge so I can. So it's tilted up and it works really, really well. It's a really real delight. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, you're going to put your phone down around the house anyway. You might as well have charge in the places you put it down yeah i'm kind of it kind of makes me think i remember when starbucks was like hey we're putting charging mats in all of the tabletops at starbucks 
and no phones. Well, I mean, I guess no iPhones had wireless charging at that point. And like two Android phones had three different standards. Um, it's like, this is stupid, but I was wrong. Okay. I was wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was wrong. Um, I, yeah, I, I went through some stuff when, when we, my, my partner also got a new Apple watch at the same time. And she had a very old, like series, God, it might've been series zero, like the first gen. Anyway, she had some old like knockoff, uh, third party Apple watch charging cable. Mm-hmm. And we tried using that with the new watch and the new watch got extremely hot. Oh, that's bad then. Don't right. do that. So like that spooked me from buying any kind of third party watch chargers, watch, charging cable that I should say. Um, yeah, I well, the the my experience has been that you need to charge the watch so infrequently. Like if you have your notifications under control, so it's only the actual important notifications like like I have like less than 50 notifications pop up my watch a day. Probably Um, I have like I charge it every other day. Basically, it's like every every wow. 40, 36 hours ish. OK, that's not the, bad. The smaller watches don't have the battery life's not quite as good um, just because there's less battery, right. you know, less space for battery in them. But yeah. um, the, the the big one seems to be like a day and a half day, at least a full day for me. Yeah. And it takes I, like 30 minutes to charge. It doesn't take long. Yeah. And the they're actually calling the new iPhones MagSafe, right? Like they've adapted that term yeah. from from the laptop to anything with like a magnetic snap on charge it's not any no it's only a, it's a specific thing it's like it's a, a, like it's a like standard a two, inch and a half well it's an apple standard well that's what i mean but it's, it's like an inch and a half two inch circle and it, and it snaps on and holds and it's like strong enough to hold the phone like you can dangle it by the cable when it's magged on right um so yeah that was the thing about this old crappy cable was like it did not snugly like you could oh. barely you could barely kind of bump the wash and it would just come off of the magnet well, so the the watch thing uses a different deal. It's not actually the MagSafe, okay, because it's a different size. The MagSafe okay. is way bigger. the the newer The newer Apple chargers are very strong magnets, though. Um, the MagSafe the MagSafe is that size. Okay, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, it's like it's kind of it's kind of put me off of like buying a cheapo, no name wireless charging thing from Amazon. But like the Apple cables are thirty bucks a piece, and that's not great either. Well, yeah. So the MagSafe cables, I feel like the Anker thing, the MagSafe, I, I believe that Apple does do a certification for the for the MagSafe accessories. Uh, I don't think that anybody else is authorized to sell Apple Watch chargers. Interesting. Yeah. That explains a lot. Yeah. What else you got? Um, let's see here. I, this is a vague one. Uh, I wrote down means of communication that aren't Twitter. Weird. What a weird coincidence. Mm-hmm. Why would you why would that be a uh, front of mind this week, Brad? Uh, you know, it's uh, the, the need to talk to people in places other than that is becoming increasingly urgent. Let's say we talk in uh, you we're talking co-host. We talk in uh, Peach. You got your path going. I don't know yet which one I'm going to say is the crucial one. I guess Discord. Discord. Discord is like a top two for me, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Discord is such a different use case, though. It's very it's extremely opt in and like closed and kind of insular, right? Like you're you're, well, you're you're curating yourself into very into closed communities as opposed to something that like I I I don't love all the rhetoric about like digital town square with regard to Twitter, but like it is very much an open like you can kind of see any lunatic shouting anything on there. Well, and it's also it also was kind of the de facto um, social network for people in our line of work. Yes. Right. So journalists and game people and tech people all congregated there for whatever reason. And we're I, like, I think that's the thing that I'm bummed out about, about the Twitter situation. Like, like the fact that my special effects people who mostly were on Instagram, but also cross posted to Twitter are just going to go full Instagram now. And right. Like the game people are going to Mastodon and co-host, it looks like, and and Discord, of course. And the tech people and the science people are all going completely different directions. So it's it's a like like being able to get all of that stuff in one place was really convenient and nice. And, yes. and that's gonna probably go away, it looks like. Yeah, it was it was interesting to see the night the night the story came down that everybody had quit. Yeah. Like I and everybody else immediately went into panic mode of tweeting like, here's where I might post in the future. And and it was interesting to see person by person who had chosen what platforms. Like yeah. yes, some people very much were just, hey, I'm on Instagram now. And and welcome to my TikTok. Right. Yes. So a, a definite fragmentation is probably going to occur. But um, anyway, hopefully something better will arise. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like it's going to be that. 
I, and I mean, here's the thing. Ultimately, if I get down to it, the 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 communication on the smaller scale in Discord and and like feels. I, I hesitate to say this because it's fraught, but like the Discord situation feels less like parasocial internet relationships and more mm. like actual like early like '90s message boards and totally. things like that, where like. I actually did go do hangouts with people that I knew from message boards. Like I met people from Shack News in real life at, oh, yeah. at, at like PAXs and, and, uh, and Comic-Con and, and, and QuakeCon and stuff like that. Totally. I mean, well, I've, I've said many times, like meeting up with people I knew only from IRC at E3 is how I got into games. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, like stuff like Discord is definitely kind of replicating that. Yeah. So more. shout out to the tech pod discord also. Hello. Yes. Yes. You, you can become a, uh, you can become a patron at <laughs> patreon.com slash tech pod hashtag shill. Um, can we talk about my steam deck? Sure. Brad, I love my steam deck, man. How's, how's the steam deck treating you? It's I, I it's, it's fantastic. What, what, what usage patterns have you settled into on it? So on nights that I don't stream, I often will sit in the couch and play while like, well, it, like there's a, okay. So there's a couple of TV shows that I actually watch, but there's a lot of TV that's kind of on in the house. Like often Gina and I will watch like, I, I like, okay, here's a confession. Thanksgiving confessions here. Mm-hmm. I love CBS reality shows because of the puzzle design, like the big brother and survivor and amazing race mm-hmm. puzzle and challenge design is so good. It's so fun to watch and it's so fun to try to figure out what they were trying like, what variables they had in the design of this challenge so that they could, you know, juice it to be the, the, toward the person they want to be able to win stuff like that. It's so, so, so good. I hate all the other talk, like all the talking and all the strategy and all the game bullshit is just okay. exhausting. Sure. So I, I, I see where this is going. Yeah. So I'll sit there with like, uh, you know, previously it would have been a phone game, but now I can play like Spider-Man or something if I want, or, I can stream something from the from the gaming PC in the other room across my 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 Wi-Fi my good Wi-Fi, and uh, I get the full I get a full video game as video game experience with like like DX12 and you know ray tracing and all that stuff, but on a handheld in my living room. Now, what is the courtesy practice when you are playing a handheld on the couch next to someone who might be actually watching the entire show? In terms um, of, are you headphoning it? So sometimes it's a little bit of like one of your headphones, like I'll put, a, I'll put one AirPod in and just okay. kind of, you know, uh, so mono it. Uh, sometimes it's playing stuff that I don't really need a lot of sound for. So I'll just have it up loud enough that I can hear like the bleeps and the bloops, but not maybe background music and stuff like that. I don't play a lot of story. Like I play a lot of roguelikes and stuff like that. They're like, I'll play a Spelunky or I'll play a Dead Cells or I'll play a Hades. Um, and those are light audio games for me a lot of the times. Sure. So doing any emulation on there. I have been. I've been playing. Um, one of the things I have been actually playing is Twilight Princess, Zelda, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Whoa. which I bounced off of in the first like hour uh, back in the day. Uh, it works really well. Uh, I've done some SNES stuff, which is which is lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, it emulates emulates super well and maybe have run some like later stage dolphin stuff, even um, like Wind Waker and, and stuff like that. You're doing the GameCube version of Twilight Princess? I am doing I'm doing the GameCube version. Yeah, because the Wii version had weird controls. Oh, right. Yes, they I, I assume I'm, I'm sure that stuff could be mapped to button inputs, but I'm sure it's cleaner to just do the GameCube. It, it's cleaner to do the GameCube version because like the dolphin dolphin on there just upreses it automatically. I wish that like Rogue Squadron and those types of games uh, worked well, but it, but it also it looks like it works well with like, I don't know, it, it, it has so far worked with almost everything I've thrown out at emulation wise. Um, and then I can even like even games that aren't supported. So grounded is technically not supported by the steam deck. I can remote into the desktop and play that way. And that works great. So it's, it's a, it's a really neat piece of tech tech. And I think that the steam, the steam big picture UI is now in beta on the desktop. So yes. if you want that on your windows version, you can now. It is. Is, it nice. is in fact, I much like the, much like the watch. I'm excited to see what maybe a couple more iterations of that thing look like. Yeah, I think I think that's right. I mean, look, the nice thing that I have is a natural path for hardware from me downstream because there is a there is a young child in the house who at some point in the future, when a Steam Deck two or three comes out, will be mm. really excited about getting a Steam Deck one. Sure. And that's you know, that's easier than like building her a gaming PC, right? It's like, hey, hey we just did that a few months ago. Oh, but right. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> look, I built her a gaming PC that I expect to last until she's in high school, probably. So fair. Yeah, she's also, in I mean, good shape. I'm, I'm sure you have those parts anyway, right? 
I had to buy a motherboard and a CPU, but yeah, okay. that's not so bad. No. Um, what else you got? You got, uh, I, I, I have wrote, I, I've written, uh, on this bulleted list defying gravity in parentheses under the desk. Okay. I was really excited at first. Cause like you found out, you found the anti-grav ray, you know how to send <laughs> people to space. You, mm-hmm. We can out musk the musk. Wait, maybe we could just send him into space. I feel like we've been trying, man. Yeah. Why do you think the SpaceX people work so hard? It's yeah. not because they're hardcore, Brad. I'm just going <laughs> to like <laughs> just picturing a whole bunch of engineers like cramming him into a locker. Look, that happens to be on a rocket right before it takes off. <laughs> Look, Elon Musk is the ultimate B-Arc person, it seems like. Um, um, anyway, uh, so so but this is a limited scope for Define Gravity. I, too, have been Define Gravity under my desk this year. Yes. What, what's your what's your strat? What have yeah, you been doing? We, we've talked about this before, and it's been a while since I've needed to do it. And I do have some new stuff to mount under the desk again. So I figured mm-hmm. it might be fun to revisit the topic. Um, nanotape, obviously, is like the perennial go to around the tech pod community. Do you, do you use it under, I don't use it under so, the desk. So I don't either. That's kind of why I wanted to bring this whole thing up yeah. is um, pretty much everything I've got under there mounted right now is using three M dual lock. Oh, so you which, can take it off and on. So yes, yeah, so it will snap off. So we've, we've talked about that before as well as so a dual lock is, well, it's the same thing as command strips. If you're familiar with that brand. Oh, wait, I thought the dual lock was chunky Velcro. It is, but that's also what commands. Unless no, no command strips, command strips are, like an adhesive gel that when you mash them up, they stick. And then when you pull them horizontally, then the, the, the stiction breaks and, they, and it'll so, release clearly. So you, I think we're both right because I'm looking at the stuff. 3M actually markets a whole bunch of products under the command brand. Ah, um, so dual lock is, is the chunky it's, it's, it's okay. You know, Velcro is like soft on one side and yeah. Um, and kind of hard stiff on the other. So the dual lock is the same material on both sides. It's like, kind of hard, rigid plastic tongs or it, teeth. Yeah, it feels like industrial strength Velcro, kind of. Kind of, yeah. We, we've talked about it before. It, it kind of snaps together as opposed to the, the loop and hook um, format of it Velcro. It makes a clicking sound when yeah, you it, push it, it together. It kind of it kind of snaps, clicks. Yeah. It's very strong. Uh, yeah, it's, I've got, it's super strong. I've got I've got an Astro Mixamp Pro stuck to the underside of the desk uh, with, with dual lock. So I've got this Motu M4 now. Yes. Uh, I've also got a little analog audio mixer that's also like a bit beefy. Mm-hmm. And I guess I'm going to go to the dual lock again. The The underside of my desk is like I'm trying to decide how to it's describe like it. Smooth wood. Not super smooth. It's also oh, not it like wood. Is, is it like that desk. cardboard stuff? It's it's the cardboardy hard. Kind of like, And I don't know that nanotape is going to adhere too well to. No. Something I, that rough. I don't use nanotape. I use nanotape at 90 degrees. From from through the force of gravity. Oh, most. interesting. Yeah. So I like nanotape for me is about putting my stream deck, like my Elgato little button things and my wireless charger stand and my um, honestly, my mouse wrist rest and my and my keyboard wrist rest and locking them all in place on not the on, on the desktop. Yeah. Um, in, in a way that they're removable under my desk. I just use double sided foam tape for everything and then get a putty knife and scrape it off if I have to. Huh? Yeah. Huh. Maybe I should. I mean, that stuff is mega strong, right? The double sided foam tape. Yeah. You can get it in different strengths. Okay. So I get the green one, uh, the 3M green, which is the less strong one. You can get one that is if you like the one, the one with the red peel off stuff. That's like a goo under there. If you put that on, will basically never come off. Like it's on, it's on like my headphone hook is on with that just because I knew where it was going to go and I was happy with it. Uh, And that's what was on the headphone hook. The um, let's see, I have the headphone hook. I have a power strip glued up there. I have a USB hub uh, double sided taped up there. And then I did a bunch of wire baskets, too. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate goal. This this desk doesn't really accommodate that. But if and when I ever move and build a new desk. Yeah. Uh, it's time. I, it's going to be. It's going to be baskets all over the place. I mean, I've, I've got a. I've got an IKEA cable rack on the back of this desk where it will fit, but mm-hmm. more baskets, more baskets. The baskets. The one thing I. W- I wish I had bought bigger baskets because the ones that I bought seemed like they were big enough, and they are absolutely are not because, like, because it's a sit stand desk. There's a lot of slack that has to oh, go sure. someplace. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, tricky. I'm. <clears throat> I'm feeling like when I do a new desk situation, I might. I might cover like the entire. Uh, the underside, the entire back half of the desk underside, mm-hmm. I might, I might just mount baskets everywhere back there and just so put, 
put all the cables, all the Raspberry Pis, like everything in there. So I have three 18 inch baskets. The thing I'm going to say is you're going to have a hard time putting the Raspberry Pis in there because the cables are like it gets it gets kind of rowdy in those baskets. Hmm. Just because just because like if you have a think about like a thick power strip cable, you got to fold over three times. Yes. All that cable has to go someplace and it has oh, a sure. lot of tension yeah. on it. Yeah. And like I wouldn't I wouldn't like I would screw Raspberry Pis have holes that you can screw in. I would just yes. screw them in. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, not yeah, on under, the floor. Uh, I'm all about this. Like no. this between this and the racks and the reusable zip ties. I, my life has changed for cable management. Yes, this no, year. Nothing on the floor. Everything under the desk. I even got one of those snakes that has like a cable channels in it so that when the desk goes up and down, it just, the cables all bend nicely together. Mm. It's very fancy. Uh, Brad, I've been I've been teaching myself to play the guitar with uh, Ubisoft's Whoa. hit title Rocksmith. Wow. Is that yeah. hang on? Is that is it still Rocksmith 2014 or have they put out? No, a, there's a Rocksmith as a service now, of course, because that's not that's not 2014. Is it is it was an actual like pay subscription service? It's it's like it's like, yeah, I'm paying like I think 30 bucks a year or something. It, it wasn't oh, not I, bad. Like I looked at it. and was like, oh, this is way less than paying a person for two guitar lessons. So yeah. here we yes. are. Is that on Steam or is that it's, it's own on service Uplay now? only? Oh, wow. Okay. Ubisoft Connect. Interesting. Um, so, but it, it works the same way Rocksmith. So Rocksmith, if you don't know, is basically somebody at Ubisoft or somewhere like 10, 15 years ago, looked at Rock Band and was like, you know, we could probably teach people how to play guitars for real with similar technology. And it, it's kind of that, like it has a mixture of tutorial videos and exercises that teach you like chords and fingering and all that kind of stuff. And then like there's um, he, he, like arrangements for actual songs so like if you want to take your classic learning to play the guitar examples like brown eyed girl and you know well brown eyed girl is the one i'm doing right now so i'm, I'm gonna use that as an example and it it has like chord patterns for for uh acoustic like campfire kind of playing it has uh, electric patterns for if you want to learn how to do the actual fingering and 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 all that and it kind of automatically uh, like it, it knows how, how well you're doing at your exercises and stuff. So it gives you the one that it thinks you're probably ready for. Uh, and then it presents them to you in that kind of the notes flying towards you down the track way so that you just learn, like you can play it like a video game. Almost you strum when the notes hit the guitar strings and, and move your fingers in the right positions as you right. go. I assume, I mean, this game is franchise is over a decade old at this point. I assume the tone detection is pretty much perfect at this point. So See, they have multiple options for that. Since I have an audio interface that's an, a good one and a nice microphone, and I'm trying to learn how to play acoustic, I just aim the microphone that I'm using right now at the guitar, and it works. Oh, interesting. I I could be wrong about this. I want to say when they launched, you had to go f- through a kind of like XLR to USB adapter straight into the computer to, to detect it. I didn't realize you could use a microphone now. Yeah, so uh, it used to be that you had to plug in a guitar like it was going into a special like little amplet thing that they sold. Right. And then they then they switched to work with most audio interfaces, but there were always issues with like focus right and stuff that had wonky drivers. Uh, now you can use their adapter. You can plug in uh, to a USB um, quarter inch. Uh, or if you're playing electric or you can use it just a, just a normal microphone and it'll it'll listen to your microphone and tell you if it's going to work. So, so as far as the game is concerned, it just needs audio, like however, just needs you, get, audio, yeah. however you get the audio to. Oh, that's awesome. So I could I could plug straight into this Motu. That's what I'm doing. Shit. Wait, you said With, you're using the mic. I'm using the mic, but you could plug like I have a I have a, if I had an electric, I could plug straight into the Motu. You, you go like a quarter quarter inch from the guitar straight quarter into, an into, guitar into, the, into quarter. the Oh, my God. Well, no, because your XLRs and the Motu are combos. They're XLR quarter inch. Oh, you could just use the quarter inch. Uh huh. Oh, man. Like any straight up, like any standard patch cable. I, I would I assume it has to be mono. But oh, yeah, man. I might have to look into that. What it's kind of. I'm oh, sorry. OK, no, go ahead. What kind of guitar did you get? I just got a $150 Yamaha Junior Learner guitar. OK, it's got to be. I, I Well, no, no offense to Yamaha or anything. It's got to be a clone, right? Like, I'm sure it's a clone of something. I, it's, 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 it's it either, looks like every acoustic guitar ever. Most, oh, oh it's an acoustic, is it an acoustic? Oh, it's not even an acoustic electric. It's literally just an acoustic. No, I didn't spend money on an acoustic electric. I okay, just got actually, the acoustic. That would be way more than 150 probably. Yeah. Um, I, like I, I literally, uh, the, my daughter had expressed interest in learning to play instruments. And okay. so I wanted to have instruments around a year or two ago. That's cool. Um, yeah. So okay. it's, Power. it's been, it's, it's like, honestly, 
when I'm stressed out about something, it's just nice to pick up the guitar yeah. and practice chords for a few minutes. Extremely. I I, yeah. I played a fair amount in college and then kind of dropped it. But how, how are you finding it? Like, is it agreeing with you? It's fun. Yeah. It's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's satisfying. It's nice to be shitty at something again. Like, not that I'm the best <laughs> in the world at everything I do, because that sounds like bad, but. But like most of the stuff that I do, I have a relative, relatively high level of expertise in. So like right. progress is slow. Yeah. What you're it, what you're saying is it's nice to learn something. Yeah. It's nice to learn something new. Um, and that and that's been really exciting. So that's um, awesome. Yeah. Highly recommended the Rocksmith. I'm I'm uh, the and the new one is much friendlier for acoustic. The bad thing is I'm kind of thinking I might get an electric guitar to learn some electric stuff now because I'm getting wait, to the point that I can start playing. Wait, what's so bad about that? Well, I don't need a bunch of shit in the house, Brad. Uh, well, then you can just like put up some of those wall mounts and then it looks cool because like nice, nicely wall mounted guitars are like decor. That's true. That is true. Um, I'm excited to hear what there's a lot of cool guitars out there. I'm excited to hear what you might go for if you buy one. Yeah. I mean, the question is like, I, I think, well, so the takeaway is the the junior, the junior Yamaha, the frets are a little bit close. I have big fingers. And so it's like, like a E, like what's the chord where it's all three on the same row? E. Uh, a? A. 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 Yeah, it's like it's like second fret, second string, third string, string, yes, fourth string. Yeah, that's A. Yeah. Um, that one's hard on that one just because there's not enough space in between the frets for my fingers. Sure. Um, oh, you can you can you could just do in you could just index finger that so one. So yeah, I index finger it, which is which okay. is yeah. Anyway. Tar's fun, um, man. I should start playing again. You should start playing again. It's good. It's like I, I like I can't overemphasize the importance of I'm I'm it, like it's almost meditative. If I yes. want to sit down and just practice strumming and practice chords, chords and stuff like that for like 10 minutes, it feels really good. It's good brain. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you say it's good brain? Yeah, man. It's good brain. <laughs> Look, I think we could all use a little more good brain. Um, I mean, there, you know, there's a isn't there. A, I don't know if there's an actual term in like cognitive science for that. But like there's this the whole is the whole flow state that you also get with like painting and yeah, putting a jigsaw puzzle too. together. Yeah. Right. Like anything, anything that focuses your brain so much that you can't think about all the stuff you worry about. Well, it's nice to have something like that. That's not a video game. Cause usually yeah. I use video games for that. Yeah. Um, I've also been, this is not on topic, but I've also been going to the pool every week and I've found that like, <clears throat> the amount of good brain I get from from an hour in the pool swimming laps, just where there's nothing I can do but think about swimming in a straight line mm -hmm. and keeping going sure. is so high compared to like, say, taking walks or something like that that doesn't require full focus. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Get That's that awesome. good brain, man. Yeah. I, I, I could use some more good brain myself. I just, ah, man, I bought this keyboard right before the pandemic started and never touch it. And I hate myself for it. Oh, man, you should I play. I shouldn't. I should not get back into guitar when I've got a, an instrument sitting here that I should be learning. Well, you know what? If we. um, Yeah, I, I, I the keyboard's the next thing on the list. So uh, there's some pretty cool keyboards out there these days as well in terms of USB outputs and Bluetooth and stuff that they are now building in there. My my whole thing is just to buy the cheap one to see if I'm like, it's the same approach I use for tools, right? Is you buy the cheap one, see if you use it. If it becomes something you use enough that the cheap one is no longer good enough where it breaks, then pass the cheap one on and buy the good one. But, but yeah, like, yeah. like I, I, I like that that stuff's accessible. Totally. This one, I mean, this was under 300 bucks. So I, oh, yeah, I feel like a, for that's a looking, reasonable price looking at what keyboards normally cost, which is double that or more. Like it's a, it's a Casio entry level that is like really nice for the price. I thought that yeah. that felt like a, you know, I'll try this, but then I didn't really try it as much you, as I should. Anyway, you, sh you should plug it into the Motu, plug it in that MIDI port on the Yamoto, Motu, could. get it going. You know, I could, or I don't even, I don't even need, um, MIDI. Like I said, it's got a straight USB out that you can just plug it into any computer and like any kind of sequencer should be able to use it. Nice. Anyway, what else you got? Um, Gosh, well, this this will be real quick. The only other one I wrote on my list was um, I wrote open source software. No, really. <laughs> I know we talk about it all the time and we'll get through this quickly, but it's, it's mostly it's mostly having moved my NAS over to Linux and having to do all that setup myself and like really understand everything that is going on in that thing. Like I'm just kind of gobsmacked all the time that all of this stuff is available for free. And I write it's and I, I, and I do mean that in the free as in beer sense which is not often how the kind of open source zealots mean it well will we do it i mean we talk about it on the fospod a fair amount but it's it's um i think jeremy allison who's one of the co-creators of samba or one of the maintainers of samba now said it's people who are just building the public utilities 
of of the technological technological world, right? Yeah. Like that's what's happening over there, right? And it's like, it's kind of amazing. That, that, that's the thing that has just blown me away so much is that every time I step back and look at how much that machine is doing, yeah, and, and the fact that like none of it like. In a fully commercialized software world, like think about, you know, back in the 90s, like we've talked to open source people about like back when compilers were very expensive, you know, like yeah. everything, everything under the old Microsoft regime was like hundreds of dollars. I right? spent six hundred dollars on Visual C plus plus at right. one point. Exactly. Just to, just to be able to make programs for Windows computers. Right. And like I'm I'm running a bunch of enterprise grade software on that thing, managing 50 terabytes of storage and doing all kinds of like super rad large scale stuff. And it's all just fucking sitting there on the internet waiting for anybody to download and use it. It's just Are you crazy. 50 terabytes? Holy shit, dude. Yeah. It's actually, it's, I mean, and it's mirrored, so it's like raw 100 terabytes. But I figured for the resiliency, I was like, you know what? I can give up. 50 is probably fine. How many drives do you have in there? Six. Okay. Like six, 14 six, gigs or 20 six, gigs or 18, something? Six 18s. Wow. Drives got cheap. Drives continue to get cheap. Yeah. I you, think... We, I think, I think you bought your drives at the right time. Mine were more expensive than that. Yeah, I, I caught them on a sale. Um, but there are bigger. I think I'm gonna say there are like 22 gig. I mean, terabyte drives getting out I there think now. I, I think I bought on the last. Um, I think I bought on the Black Friday sale last year a bunch of 12 gig, 12 terabyte drives or 14 terabyte drives. I can't yes. remember now. Also, I've begun shucking. Yes, yeah, I'm shucking. I, I'm I, shuck life, baby. I I have I shucked recently for the first time. Um, yeah. I bought a little, uh, I guess that's something I'm thankful for. I bought a little four, U a four bay USB hard drive enclosure. Mm -hmm. It looks like a tiny PC. Like the form factor looks exactly like a tiny tower Ooh. PC. Oh, except with four, four removable bays on the front where you stick the hard drives in. Oh, that's, that's uh, cool. And it's USB three out. Um, and yeah, got it hooked you, up to my NAS currently. Like it, it's, it's going to move in the other room. It's going to be my backup volume. Cause it turns out you need a lot of hard drives to back up. A pool that size. Are you noticing perf differences on the USB three interface or the throughput is not as high as I'd hoped. Like the read and write is topping out at about 250 megabytes a second, which like it's not bad. I don't know if that's mm. just the hard drives limiting it at that point, because US, USB three throughput is like th almost three times that much. It could be the back plane of the uh, it could be the controller, too. That's that's possible. I mean, like, it's not terrible. It's like it by and large, it's going to be a backup target over the network. So it's going to be limited to 100 anyway. Oh, OK. So it's not the end of the world. I, I had hoped it would be a little faster for reads, but anyway. Is it hooked up to like a Raspberry Pi or something? Uh, right now it's hooked up to my big oh, okay. x86 NAS, but it will be hooked up to a Pi 4 going forward. Nice. Um, also, I didn't have to do the little 3.3 volt tape trick. Oh, yeah, I didn't either on mine. I had the kept on tape ready to go and everything. Right. I, I started to buy some and I was like, I'll just see if it works. And it totally did. I guess it depends on what kind of power supply you're hooking them up to. Yeah, I think it also depends on what which drives, which vendor you bought chucked to chuck there. Like I chucked some Western Digital drives and they were fine. It yeah, seems. that's that's what I've got. Also, um, I I need to buy. That reminds me, I need to buy a same size drive I have now for a hot swap, a uh, hot failover. Mm. Uh, uh, just just in case. Um, let's see. We've got I've got uh, AirPod Pros on my list. I did not buy the new AirPod Pros, but I just got the firmware update that they gave to the that that adds the new transparency feature from the AirPod Pro twos to the AirPod Pro ones, and they are probably my favorite technology purchase of the last like ten years. Jeez, that's a mm, man. That's like, a big claim. <laughs> They're, I mean, it's, it's not, it's because there's such a huge leap over the previous generations. Like the, like they add functionality that is, that just doesn't exist, didn't exist for me before in that I can leave them in all the, as long as I want, as much as I want. I can always have music or a podcast if I want, if I want some noise, the trans, the, they connect to the TVs so seamlessly that it's almost annoying sometimes when you're watching, like if Gina's watching something on her phone in the living room, then it keeps popping and saying, Hey, you're at Ponce here. You want to connect to the TV? But it means that I can like lay in bed and put TV on at night and not wake up somebody in the adjoining bedrooms or, or even Gina, if she's in, in bed. Um, it means that like we can have two different things on in the living room and not, not bother each other, uh, which is nice, but still be in the same place. The the noise canceling is great. It's 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 not as good. I've had better noise canceling. Still very very good. The transparency mode is the thing that's magic because it means that I can switch from noise canceling. And usually when you use transparency mode on on a pair of noise canceling headphones, it sounds like you're on a shitty phone call where you get like 
you know, the, like there's background hiss and you're picking up all of the all of like the room noise and somebody clinks a, a fork fork on something. You hear it as if your ears are resting on the plate. It sounds I you almost can't tell that you have headphones on with the, with the new transparency mode. It's really, really cool. That's very cool. Which means you don't have to take your headphones out to talk to somebody, which is the upshot. Anyway, um, I, I feel a little bit weird about the social consequences of transparency mode. Yeah. Eh, you know, something you used to. Well, hey, look, as I don't want to put anybody on blast, but let's say if you were to live with someone who likes to walk around with headphones all the time and that don't have that feature. Yeah. I would <laughs> I would much rather they wore headphones that did. So I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you should, uh, you know, Christmas just around the corner, mm. Brad. Ooh, that's making an investment in myself. Yeah. It's like a Homer bowling ball. Right. But for your partner's ears. Mm hmm. My my partner does the same thing. It's bad news. She listens to podcasts all the time, and yes. she'll yeah. She right. talks to the podcasts. Huh? Oh, you know what? Sure. I've yes. Okay. There's a little yeah. bit of that around here too. Sometimes, sometimes. Look, I'm sure that people who are listening to this podcast have occasionally yelled at the radio in the car. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, that happens. I get it. Um, I would yell at me too. Let's see other stuff on my, on on my list. Uh, these these are still thankfuls. Longtime listeners will be familiar with them. Uh, good tools, man. Mm -hmm. I love. I love. I got. Um, I got a fancy exacto set to replace the the my old handle that I lost someplace. I just had the one stick, the like the basic ass exacto knife. I got one that has like a screwdriver handle and like a and a finer finer handle. It's so nice. Like when we were carving pumpkins, I took the exacto knives out there, and it was it what normally is a is an hour long endeavor with a serrated kitchen knife it took like five minutes with the exactos. It was fantastic. Yeah, I I can't speak for everybody. Maybe I'm weird, but like I have to like tell myself go get stuff. And it's not like it's not like, oh, I don't want to spend 20 bucks to get better screwdrivers or something. It's it's more I don't think about it. You know, like well, I went I went so long without a headlamp, for example. And it's not like, oh, I can't make myself spend eight bucks on a headlamp. I just didn't think I, I it never occurred to me like, hey, you should get a headlamp. There's a like, better way to do this right, thing. Right. Yeah. And then once once I got one, I was like, the fuck have I been doing all these years? Like literally like trying to drag a lamp down onto the floor to build a PC so I can see in the case. It's like, at least for me, I, I almost feel like you need to go out and actively do research on the things you do to see if there is something better you could be getting. Cause they, I think some people listen to podcasts like ours for that information see, too. See when you spend this, as much time making podcasts as I do, <laughs> you don't listen to many. <laughs> well, you're really good at, at, I mean, look, here's the thing. We have a lot of experience in the tools. Like I, I put some uh, Teflon, some of the silicone lube on my podcast mic arm yesterday. And now listen to this. And are, is that which which mic arm is it's that? It's the same one you have, the Rode PSA one. Oh, mine, I have got a lot of issues with mine. Do you have you have your RE20 on there? Uh-huh. Is it, do you find that to be too heavy for this arm? Nope. Okay. I think there's you, something wrong with my arm. You can arm. cinch down the middle if it needs to be tighter. The I've, I've tried the that. Is it, how do you do that? It's not just that screw. It's just the screw. You have to, you, I, it's both sides though wait the other side is smooth it doesn't oh, have the other side's a rivet on mine huh yeah, I, don't, I don't remember i did i had to do it on one of the ones at the tested office once but i don't remember what we did this, this this thing is losing tension rapidly to the point that it'll just like start collapsing in the middle of the day you should uh, uh you should send them a note they, they do pretty good warranty service my in my experience yeah maybe i should get in touch with them i've had i've had issues i've also just thought about replacing it but like so on the on the tools front i have a set of i fix it screwdrivers that i bought 10 10 or 12 years ago now that have the the spinny top they're yes. like the snap-on style yeah and the, it's like they're the most used screwdrivers in the house you know they have i have three different sizes of four different sizes of um of just a traditional phillips screwdriver it has a flat screwdriver it has hex heads it has a couple allen wrenches in like common taking stuff apart sizes it's a it's an absolute delight it makes yeah. me happy every time i use it if, if you take things apart having having a set like that where you'll just never have to worry about having the right screwdriver again or not well is, yeah is and then i have a I have a larger set of bits that's one with bits that is uh, like these are no bit screwdrivers, which are sometimes nice for precision. The I have a larger set that has a bazillion security bits. So if there's whatever I need to open, I can open. Um, I, having a nice multimeter is really nice if you do electronic stuff. If you want to, even if it's just for continuity testing to get a, a an easy way to clamp on wires and get buzzes, stuff like that is really nice. Having yes. a pair of needle nose pliers having a uh like a pair of forceps and stuff like that for small work is 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 really convenient yeah i've since we started this podcast i mean i've partially taken a cue from you like also talking to kyle weens and stuff like that like i have i've been slowly building a tool drawer 
of pretty much all the stuff you just rattled off. Like, oh, also, first of all, is multimeter actually a valid pronunciation? Because that's how it's I started out. Multimeter. I don't know. I'm always bad. Uh, like, look, I'm I, bad I, on pronunciation. I, I, also, I also started out calling it a multimeter and I think was told that that's maybe not the way. <laughs> That's the way my high school electronics teacher said it, but Dude, I grew up school, in Northeast Tennessee, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what state you were in. If a high school electronics teacher can call it that, then I'm going to call it that. Um, yeah, the um, I'm trying to think the other stuff. Like I bought a roll of gaff tape this year because mm-hmm. I, I I needed to tape stuff to the floor when we were in that rental house in, in July. And why the hell I haven't just spent 20 bucks on a roll of gaff tape for stuff around the house? I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's really convenient because it goes on and off easily. Like it sticks really well, but but it peels off with leaving and leaves nothing behind. Yeah. Um, also, I, at first when I was buying the stuff, I was frustrated that like you you can't get anything in a quantity less than about a hundred times what you need. Gaff tape or anything, tape, screws. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you name it, like things that come in consumable quantities. Uh, like the nylon screw set I bought or whatever, but like it, over time it has proven to be like, Oh, like, like I bought little stick on rubberized feet that you can put on things to, to give them feet. Mm-hmm. And like, I only needed four of them and I got a set of 120, but you keep that stuff around long enough. And all of a sudden you start realizing like, Oh, I'm, I am going to need these things periodically. And the stuff needs feet. It's actually nice to have all this stuff around. Cause I've like reached in there and grabbed a thing that I already had numerous times now. And it's, Possibly the best feeling. Yeah. Um, let's see. Other stuff. Still thankful. I love vacuum. I still love vacuum bottles. I know how, that the battery powered mugs are all the rage now, but I'll, mm. I'll put my coffee in a vacuum bottle and drink out of that all day. What makes it a vacuum bottle as opposed to just like an insulated thermos? Well, the insulator is the vacuum. Okay. So, so on a vacuum bottle, it's the, the, there's two bottles. Basically there's one inside and one outside. The inside one is only connected with a really, really limited amount of material. So there's very little heat transfer from the inner bottle to the outside world. Oh, interesting. And then the vacuum insulates you from insulates, whatever your beverage is. Oh, is the, is the, the space in between the two? Is it, it's airtight? Uh Yeah. It's airtight, airtight and, and not empty, but like low, there's not a lot of stuff in there. Interesting. It's all (laughs) much like, much like intergalactic space. It's not quite a true uh, void, a true vacuum, but pretty close. I'm going to say less of a vacuum than intergalactic space, Hmm. like more stuff in there than an inner. I think intergalactic space probably has less stuff than an inside my coffee bottle vacuum, but I could be wrong. That's possible. That's possible. I feel like it'd be a little bit dangerous if it was that much of a vacuum. Interstellar space, I understand, is actually like surprisingly full. I mean, we're still talking on the order of like atoms per volume. Yeah, it's atoms but, per cubic mile or something, right? Right, right. but but there yeah. is more. There are more atoms floating around out there in between solar systems than you think. I think. I mean, look, it's it's why when we go to Alpha Centauri, we're going to need a whole bunch of ice on the front of the spaceship. That's right. Um, speaking of space, I'm thankful for the. I, I like I, one of my highlights of this year has been watching. I get a. I get a. I signed up for the JWST newsletter from NASA. Okay. So when there's new pictures, I get an email and it's like, Hey, what, what awesome thing am I going to see today? That that was going to be my first question was like, what's the best like concentrated way to keep up with this stuff? It sounds like that. I would have said Twitter a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They post a lot of pictures on Twitter and Mm -hmm. Instagram too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Does does the newsletter, do you get like straight up like TIFF links in the, in the newsletter? I no, you do not get TIFF links. It's like, Hey, here's a picture of a thing and a little paragraph about why it's cool. It's basically the same stuff that's on the JWST like hot images page or whatever. I was because, you know, you don't want to deal with like crappy Twitter image compression. If they can, if they can just funnel you straight to the like 10,000 by 10,000 source image. Look, there's a couple that have been good enough that I was like, I'm going to go grab this one and put on my phone wallpaper. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, And then uh, uh, vaccines, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, shout out to vaccines. Yeah. Turns out sometimes uh, you need them. We went to Disneyland and didn't get sick. We, you know, Hey, that seems nice. Yes. I'm, I'm a big fan. So uh, go get vaccinated. I need to still get my flu shot. I'm bad and haven't done mine yet. Oh, gosh. So. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen that. Apparently the flu is extra bad this year. Like extra, extra bad. The flu and RSV together and, and is putting people in hospital again. So yes, I, I started to ask avoided. if there's if there's such a thing as an RSV vaccine, but I don't know I, if there is. I don't think so. Um, it seems to I think it mostly only affects children generally. It seems to be worse in kids. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody uh, I know who's gotten the RS has had the RSV go through their house has re- strongly regretted it though. So. Yes, yes, I, yes. I know, I know people who, with small children who have been hospitalized and like in a very precarious situation. Yeah, it's not great. 
Um, and great. apparently, I, I don't know if this like maybe owes to more testing because people are in a testing mood after the last few years. But apparently, apparently we're at like five X the normal number of flu cases for this time of year. Great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's apparently they they did a good job of identifying the dominant strains in the in the flu shot this year, though. Oh, so the so, so the vaccine setting. I, 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 I might go do that after we finish this episode. Yeah, you, you should. The, the ones the ones that are predominant are the ones that the vaccine cover the, the flu shot covers this oh, that, year. So that's nice. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't I don't want to get the flu and be sick for two weeks. That sucks. Oh. No. Um, so that, I think that's I mean, there's some more stuff on here we could hit, but I, I think I'm, I feel, feel like that's a good list of things I'm thankful for. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about the K blocks when we were doing the under desk stuff. K blocks, K blocks, K blocks are these little they're like stick on uh, pegs. Oh, it's like wow. a grid of pegs with knobs on the end and you oh, can just look, kind of tuck cables into them. Look at that. Do the knobs screw off? No, the knobs, it's all it's, all, it's all like rubbery. cast plastic. Yeah, it's, it's injection kind of molded, it's like, probably like, fl- like uh, flexible enough to just bend stuff around and shove cables in there. Yeah, they're like hard rubber kind of. So you 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 can like you can pull the cable in. It won't come out easily, but it's easy to get out if you want to get it out. Do, do these come with their own adhesive or do you stick them on? They have yourself? the heavy duty 3M red stuff oh, on okay. the back. So when you put them on, they're pretty much on. <laughs> they're never coming off. Well, I mean, you can get them off. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had to pull one or two off, but like. It's not, I would, I would make sure you get them where you want them. Okay. I've never seen these before. This is C-A-B-L-O-X to be clear. If you C-A-B-L-O-X. Want. We'll, I'll, we'll put some Amazon, maybe Amazon affiliate links if people want to help support the pod in the, um, in the, in the notes. Um, but yeah, it's, they're really good. I, um, I, I like them a lot and I put them on the, so I put them on the lips, uh, like under the lips of the desk or on the back edge sometimes. So that they hold like it basically gives me a straight shot for the cable to where it's going to come out. So like where the where the mount monitor arm goes, there's one right next to it so they can just shoot straight up there into the cable channel and the monitor arm, stuff like that. I've I've thought as I continue to fantasize about the desk I might put together eventually, like I've almost thought about covering the underside of the desk with some intermediate material to stick things to in case you don't because like the type of stuff you're describing sounds like it would at a minimum be very difficult to get off of the actual wood surface. If not, like maybe also damage it to get it off. And like, I almost feel like maybe having something in between there that you care about less would be nice. I don't know. You tell me. So the way I think about it is that the desktops are relatively inexpensive. If you want to replace, hmm. like I bought the, I mean, I didn't buy it. A steel case sent me a, um, a, an evaluation steel steel case solo desk a couple of years ago or last year, I guess, uh, which is a, their like entry level sit stand. And I will replace the top. I, I'm not, I'm less worried about that than I am about, like I've been screwing stuff into it. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Is there the tops let, modular? Yeah. The tops, you can always unscrew. like oh. almost any desktop. You can take the top off and go, go to Ikea or go get a custom top made or whatever. Okay. Interesting. Cause it's all, right, all that, it is, is a inch thick piece of wood yeah, or okay. co- composite or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've mentioned it before. I probably would just do the butcher block countertop desktop with yeah. adjust, adjustable legs and just do it myself. You know, it's funny. I looked at when I got this one, I, they had a whiteboard top option, a dark dry erase top option that I thought about. And I was like, I think it's going to be too slidey. Mm. Um, that, yeah, I don't think it'd be great for like drinks and stuff, but that I could, I could kind of see the appeal. I like there's the, the idea of just being able to write notes on the desktop is really compelling, but I was mm. like, it, but I also like to do like Lego builds and stuff. And with the lights, it's too shiny. I thought so anyway, um, I guess that'll do it for us this week. Yeah. Uh, I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, my friend. Thank you. Same to you. I think it's going to be a, a chill, uneventful one. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I hope next year we can get back to the big Thanksgiving again. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, let's hope. Let us although, hope. um, we're we're doing a reduced a reduced cook as a result. So, only two pies. Only two. Wait, how do you only pick two. which two? Pumpkin and apple. It's really easy. Hang on. Let me think. What was your common third one was pecan pecan usually. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back. Yeah, that's probably, I can't believe I'm saying this because generally pecan is like damn near my favorite pie in existence, but like in the context of, of your pies, I like the pecan, like the pecan I make is pretty good. Um, I, I'm not a huge pecan. Like it's the, it's one of the only pecans I'll go for. I, I do America's Test Kitchen recipe pies just for for people yes. who are not long time yeah. listeners. Your 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 pumpkin, and again, I'm not even the biggest pumpkin pie fan, but your pumpkin pie is so sublime. Yeah, that, that pumpkin recipe. We, you cook the pumpkin first, and it makes it very rich and delicious, and not a, it doesn't taste like it came from a can. 
Oh, we can't talk about your prize anymore. I'm sorry, Brad. Uh, but you know what we can't talk about is mm-hmm. uh, supporting the show, which yeah. we are we are eminently thankful for our patrons. We sure uh, are. Uh, if you want to find out how you can support Brad well made a tech pod, you can go to patreon.com slash tech pod. Again, it's patreon.com slash tech pod, uh, where for as little as two bucks a month, you can support the show and join the fabulous tech pod discord. You can gain access to like, it's like 30 patron episodes now, right? Yeah, 31, like I a, think was the last one. Yeah. If you, if you, if you want to get in there, you get almost, you get a whole year worth of bi-monthly, bi-weekly patron episodes. That's now right. you just hammer through them extra tech pod. That's right. Um, and uh, and other great stuff as well. So uh, thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. But extra. Sp- oh, wait, is this the last episode of the month? Uh, no, we got one. No, more. We have one more. Uh, but extra special thanks to our executive producer tier patrons, including Paddle Creek Games, makers of Fractured Veil, Andrew Slosky, Bunny Thorpe Snowfall Crimes. I think I think Bunny Fiend got some uh, got some snow this oh, week. Jealous. Just Wedge, Joel Krauska, Twinkle Twinkie and James Kamek. I appreciate you all so much. So do I. I wish we had. I wish we had I, like I, I saw this. No, look, I know the people in Buffalo are probably already sucked st- sick of the snow, but I saw the snow in Buffalo. I was like, oh, man, it was really cool getting snowed in this spring. I'm Googling it right now. Uh, I mean, I once have... I was once I was pretty sure we weren't going to have to eat each other to survive. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was I'm, it was pretty. Oh, cool. I'm looking at pictures now. I mean, look, I get I get why people who live in snow laden areas are sick of snow. But yeah. I only have so much sympathy because I'm so jealous. It, yeah. it's, it's the most fun hassle I can imagine. Or not just fun, but peaceful. Like it's beautiful and, and like, quiet. I miss, I miss that. I miss the sound dampening of snow. Yeah. That that's the thing. When I, when the power was out and I walked down to pick up food from the takeout restaurant that had power down the end of the street and it was like snowing and quiet and there were no cars and there was no electric hum from the power lines mm-hmm. overhead. I was just like, Ah, oh, this is really nice. Yeah. I mean, back home, I'm sure you know. I mean, granted, we lived in very, in somewhat rural areas to begin with, but like, yeah. it's like, it's the world is dead silent. You walk out the door and you just can't hear anything. It's the most amazing thing. Yeah. Even like cars driving by and stuff like that, you don't hear them until they're really close. Like, yeah. if, if, if I could, if I could wish for it, if I could wish for a no calamity, like blizzard in San Francisco, I would. I, I would take it in a heartbeat. I would you love imagine the chaos. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's 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 throw out the proviso that nobody would actually get hurt. Wow. Because because if it actually happened, a lot of people would get fucked up in the city because they yeah. would have no idea what they were doing. But I would love like two feet of snow to get dumped on the city. Sometime. Just, just like the sidewalk situation with the hills would be yeah. a nightmare. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. I can't even imagine what a what chaos it would. It's bad when it rains here. Mm hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Special thanks to all of our patrons. Uh, yes. People are asking about a Mastodon tier reward or, or Mastodon access. I'm curious if people think that's something interesting. Please send us messages either on Mastodon or on Twitter because um, we're, we're trying to keep the temperature. We, the challenge of that right now is we can't find a way to auto. Like, there isn't an easy way to automatically gain grant access to that to people who are on the right tier. Yeah. Um, and there are costs associated with the server, especially if you have too much usage. Um, so, like, we, 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 I don't, we would love to, like, I, I really want to offer that as a service because I want, like, I think Mastodon is best when you have a community of like-minded people on your server with you, and I think the group here would be good for that. Um, but if people are interested in it, please let us know what kind of prioritize and figure that out. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks everybody for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Tech Podcast. See y'all then.